Good morning, good afternoon, people of Earth. Welcome to the fucking news with me, Deke Jackson, on whatever the fuck the day is. Are Gary Lineker and Hamza Yousaf born from the same cunt? Uh, I only ask because they both represent the kind of grand, uh, moronic, retarded hypocrisy and fucking playing good old-fashioned dumb fuckism uh, as twins. You know, uh, they could be... <laughs> I mean, I don't know, are they related? Here we have Gary Lineker, a man who went to Qatar uh, to report, report, not support, I'm going to Qatar to report, not to support. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening thing, uh, Jonathan. I'm going, I'm going to Qatar to report, not to support. I'm just taking the money. I'm just taking the fucking money to go to Qatar, a country where they kill political opposition, they kill people who blaspheme, they kill gay and trans people. He's going to report. Did he report on any of that? No, he reported on a good cross into the box because he's a fucking tosser, a vapid, hypocritical fucking tosser. Meanwhile, right, no, let's do the whole Gary Lineker story first. Gary Lineker, uh, he's confident he'll be back hosting Match of the Day tomorrow, despite his row over tweets about the government's migration policy. He said the language, he said the language used in the government's uh, announcement about its migration policy was somehow akin to Nazi Germany. It's funny that, because Gary, I don't know if you're not watching Gary, but... I don't remember you having a problem with, say, the government planning to round up the, vac the unvaccinated. Uh, uh, the government extolling people to grass on their neighbours if they were breaking the rules of Covid. That kind of thing. That kind of utter fascist Nazi fucking shit that went down in this country and many other countries that Gary Lineker was strangely silent about. In fact, Gary Lineker had the vax and fully supported the government's programme. Uh, and in fact, he, he slagged other people off. Matt Letizier springs to mind. Uh, he slagged other people off who had bad things to say about the government's pandemic laws, etc. So we can assume from that that Gary Lineker was fine by pronouncements such as we know where the unvaccinated live and plans to sack nurses, policemen, uh, fire people uh, or, you know, police people, police officers rescue workers uh, if they didn't have the compulsory medication like in Nazi Germany. Gary Lineker, if you're watching, you're a fucking tosser. You are. You're a giant hypocritical lump of steaming turd. You are. Uh, and your pronouncements on the migration policy amount to fucking the grandest hypocrisy I can imagine. You had fuck all to say about what they were going to do to the unvaccinated. Oh, the migrants. Oh, the migrants. We can't do bad things to the migrants. 15,000 out of the 20,000 migrants to arrive recently were from Albania, that well-known place of uh, European sunshine, Mediterranean uh, living. Uh, where are the Albanians seeking refuge and asylum from in Albania? Uh, it's just... It's just <laughs> they're not seeking asylum at all. They've come here to help their friends with their drug gangs and their cannabis farms. Uh, no, I'm saying... Uh, these people are uh, the least, the least deserving of asylum, and they represent the far, by far and away, the largest proportion of people on rubber boats. So fuck you, Gary Lineker. If you can't bring yourself to oppose uh, the government's fanciful pandemic policies, then fuck you. If you could bring yourself to go to Qatar and report. I'm going to report on a country that kills gays and political opposition. But you think the language, the language around migrants might have been a bit like Nazi Germany. Fuck you. Uh, you're a, you're a fucking, oh my God, words, words don't do Gary Lineker justice. They really don't. But here's a few. You're a hypocritical tosser cunt. That'll do. Hamza Yousaf. <laughs> Hamza Yousaf. I was intrigued. I don't know if many Scottish people were intrigued. Hamza Yousaf missed the vote uh, on gay marriage. He just couldn't be there. He couldn't be there for the vote on gay marriage because he was on a humanitarian mission to help a man who was on death row. Yeah, uh, that's right. He was on death row. He was on death row in Pakistan, Hamza Yousaf's other nationality. He was on death row in Pakistan because he'd fallen foul of religious laws. Hamza Yousaf's laws, the, the laws of the religion that Hamza Yousaf 
believes. That is Islam. The man is in Pakistan. He's fallen foul of Islam's laws on blasphemy, and they're going to kill him. So Hamza Yousaf leaves Scotland. And which passport do you think Hamza used? His Scottish, we don't kill people for blasphemy anymore passport, or his Pakistani passport, we totally kill people for blasphemy and for being gay. And we also victimize victims of rape. And uh, we also, we've got a good, we've got a good line in killing political opposition as well. Which passport do you think he used? The liberal, uh, the neoliberal woke passport of Scotland. Honestly, if you're 16 and you want to be a woman, that's fine by Hamza. Uh, as he flies uh, to Scotland to protect a man from his religion. To protect a man from his religion and his national religion. Because Pakistan is a theocracy uh, where Islam is the only religion allowed by law. So Hamza Yousaf flies to Pakistan on his Pakistani passport uh, to, to stand up for a person who's going to be killed. By the way, uh, the details of this case are quite fascinating, right? Uh, just in case you'd like to know. Uh, Britain actually introduced blasphemy laws into Pakistan. They wrote them. Uh, but those laws are not the ones that this man was being prosecuted. No, this man was being prosecuted for offending Islam's Sharia law because he claimed he was a prophet. Now, if any student of Islam knows, Muhammad is the last prophet of God. That's terminal and final. There will be no other prophets of God. So this man's crime was not to, in fact, blaspheme in the sense that we would think of blasphemy as. There is no God. You're all a bunch of fucking morons. That will still get you killed in Pakistan, by the way. Don't try it. Uh, no, his crime was to say, I am now a prophet. He was a bit special. I mean, you know, uh, you know, uh, they kill special people in Pakistan as well. You know, uh, people who are slightly, you know, not quite all there. Uh, yeah, th those people uh, constitute a large number of people being locked up and killed as well for various things. Uh, so here we go. Hamza Yousaf with a choice of passports. Will I use the religious tyranny passport to fly to help the man on death row because of the nationality of my passport and the religion that I believe in? Or will I use my, squat, my Scottish woke as fuck? Honestly, <laughs> will I use that passport? Which one's got the stamp in? You! Which one got the stamp in? We stamp your passport, Hamza. Nice to see you back. I have a feeling you went there. I do you know, because he is a Pakistani and a Muslim, there's every chance he went there for the public hanging. I mean, how do we know? Really, Hamza, if you're watching, how do we know you didn't go to Pakistan to be in the crowd when they hang this guy? Or do they stone blasphemers to death? I'm not sure. Let me know. Uh, let the Scottish people know, by the way, what you were saving him from. I went to save a man from being hung or stoned to death in public by my country and my religion. Now I'm back, I'd like to run your country. Can I run your country? What's the worst that could happen? I, mean, I, I can think of a few things just off the top of my head. Uh, so, I mean, either Hamza, Hamza, either you are a hypocrite and you genuinely like being a Pakistani Muslim and all this Scottish woke pish is just hypocrisy, or you're a hypocrite and you're fully woke, Scottish, neoliberal, woo, whatever you like to do with your genitals, it's no problem with me. <laughs> and when you go to Pakistan, you're a fucking hypocrite. No, honestly, kill him. He has blasphemed against Islam. Kill them all. Which, which kind of hypocrite would you like to be, Hamza? Answers on a postcard to I don't really give a fuck. In fact, I'm rooting for you to take over. I am. I'm rooting for Hamza to take over the Scottish National Party because it's comedy gold. It really is. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Keith K. Comedy gold if Hamza Yousaf ends up running Scotland. Ha he ha he ha. And that's French, which segues nicely into our next story. Rishi Sunak is to announce that Britain will give France hundreds of millions of pounds to invest in police, security and intelligence to help solve the small boats crisis. Well, I got a friend who uh, went to Calais uh, and uh, that part of France uh, where the boats come from a number of times. And uh, according to his eyewitness reports, there's no need for any intelligence. I don't, I don't know what the money is going to be used for. More baguettes, possibly. Uh, but uh, there's no need for any intelligence because these rubber boats are down on the beach. You can see them. Members of the public be going, hey, where are you going? Oh, we are going to Britain. La, 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 la. Uh, they don't do that in Albania. Well, 
They've got an Italian accent, the Albanians. <laughs> hey, we're going, to Al we're going to Great Britain to grow marijuana. <laughs> I am looking for asylum for my marijuana <laughs> drug gang. Uh, yeah, you don't need any intelligence. And while the members of the public are watching them doing that, up on the, up on the promenade, there's the police. Hey, oh, goodbye. Goodbye. So long. Adieu. Adieu. Uh, because the French and the French police don't want these fuckers in their country. This is a country where Muslims have, uh, uh, you know, terrorized and murdered. They chopped a teacher's head off for showing a picture of Islam. I say they, I mean a Muslim. Uh, and if you're a Muslim, then you're they uh, in my world. Uh, so, uh, so the French don't want these people. Uh, so long, adieu, <laughs> uh, bon voyage. There's no way they're going to take this money and buy the French equivalent of fucking donuts. And they're going to sit there in their little cop cars. Is this, you see the other rubber, oh, Jacques, what is that? More rubber boats going to England? <laughs> That's where our 200 million pounds is going on. More fucking, what do they call them? Patisserie. <laughs> More patisserie for the French gendarme. Bon voyage. Adieu. They're not stopping anybody leaving France who's Muslim or heavily tanned. They're not. They're fucking waving them goodbye. Say hello to Boris. <laughs> anyway. What else is in the news? I bought the Times. I thought the Times, it's quite expensive, the Times. I thought there would be a better class of journalism, but it's just the same pish with a bigger vocabulary. It is. Uh, HS2 will be delayed by another two years. Damn, that's a long time to wait for a train. I mean, is WH Smith's going to be open all that time so I can get, you know, a, a <laughs> so I can get a Jack Reacher novel and a fucking uh, a cheese sandwich. Two years. That's a long time to wait for a train. Boom, boom. Uh, there, and so there wasn't much uh, MPs to grill energy bosses over force fitting of meters. Uh, you know, what does that mean exactly? France will refuse to take back UK's channel migrants. So once they get here, France isn't taking them back. Uh, I've got an idea, right? When the migrants get here and we rescue them, they should take them to Dover, give them another boat. <laughs> Point them at France and uh, tell them to go back. Uh, you know, what? why bother with this? What's, what's Rishi Sunak's plan? Uh, we're going to... Uh, we're going to tell them when they've arrived, you've broken the law, you're not allowed to claim asylum, ever. You're never allowed to return to Britain, and your choices are being flown to Rwanda or going back to the country you came from. But you could offer them the third choice, or here's another rubber boat. Just saying, just saying. By the way, there's a picture of Rishi Sunak here, and every time I, I see Rishi Sunak, right, I'm forced to wonder. Just... Look at his smile, if you will. Look at Rishi's smile, right? To me, that looks fake as fuck. That is the fakest fucking smile I have ever seen, ever. Rishi Sunak. This Rishi Sunak's political road to Damascus goes like this. One minute, uh, Rishi Sunak is funding Moderna, uh, the, <laughs> the company that came up with the vaccine. Yeah, that's what his, he started a venture capital company and that was their first client uh, with money. Rishi Sunak took money from Russian oligarchs. Hey, could you invest this for me? I need a safe place to keep it. <laughs> I need safe place to keep my money. Don't ask me where money come from. Uh, he took uh, Russian oligarch money and invested it in Moderna's, at that time, untested, untried, and unwanted mRNA vaccine technology. What foresight! What awesome foresight the man had. Then after doing that uh, and making oodles of money uh, on various other bets on investments, he finds himself worth nearly a billion pounds, about 800 billion pounds to be clear, 700 and he thinks, do you know what? I've always wanted to be an MP and earn £70,000 a year and do public service. Rishi Sunak thought that, fresh from working for the bank Goldman Sachs. He thought, I've always wanted to do public service. I have. I've always wanted a safe seat in Yorkshire. 
And now, now that I'm worth 800 billion, I can finally indulge what has been my passion all these years. And it's not building the Taj Mahal from matchsticks, it's being a safe seat to Tory in Yorkshire. I've always wanted to do that for 70 grand a year, I have. Fast forward a couple of years and Rishi Sunak now runs the country. He does. And he's bringing in a central bank digital currency. Wait a minute. That sounds like the sort of thing Goldman Sachs would like to do, doesn't it? Doesn't that sound like that's the sort of thing Goldman Sachs would maybe say to one of their employees? Rishi, see in a, what, what we want you to do, Rishi, right, is get yourself a safe Tory seat, right? Inveigle yourself into government. And then uh, we'd like you to saddle the people of Great Britain with a central bank digital currency. Be great. We're all going to make a lot of money. You'll love it. Public service? Fuck that. Lining our pockets? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Rishi fake smile Sunak, soon to bring in the uh, Europe's first central bank digital currency. Speaking of Europe, did anybody know that Ursula von der Leyen, Ursula von der Leyen's husband, uh, massively involved in Pfizer and BioNTech, uh, along with she herself, in terms of investment and previous occupations. Interesting. Interesting the pedigree of the people who are running this country and Europe, isn't it? Big pharma and banks. Oh, the people who are currently running Europe and Britain, big pharma and banks. That's their background. Just in case you're interested or you think it might be relevant to where we're headed. Lineker rides the tackles. Lineker's a cunt. Lineker, cunt. I should now just, every time I think of Gary Lineker, I'll just hear the word cunt. Lineker cunt rides the tackles over flippant Nazi remark. Uh, here's the Hamza Yousaf story. Uh, what else? What the fuck? Uh, here's, <laughs> I, you know, I don't want the whole thing to be about migrants, but this is a story that can't be missed. It comes with a picture. All right, which I'll show you. Uh, this is a picture of a migrant stabbing an 18-year-old boy who's just come from the gym, right? And the reason he's stabbing him is not because he's a Muslim terrorist and he thinks white pig dogs, Christians, deserve to die. No, he wants to commit a crime that will get him sent back to <laughs> sent back to where he come from quicker than the current process at the Home Office is doing. Uh, he wants to get sent back. Mohammed entered the UK illegally on a small boat, was put up in a hotel in Bournemouth. Right? Blah, blah. Let's get to his statement. Foreign national offenders who abuse our hospitality by committing crimes will face the full force of the law, including deportation. Yeah. Okay, this is the terrifying moment. A penniless Iraqi immigrant uh, stabbed a university student in an attempt to be deported from Britain. So not quite the land of milk and honey you thought it was when you got here and you want to go back to Iraq. I'd have given him a rubber boat if he'd asked me, give me a rubber boat or I stab someone. No problem, pal. You have a rubber boat. And da, da, da. Well, that was about it, really. Uh, the rest of it, I seem to have paid for stories about celebrities. When I bought this newspaper, I thought I was buying news. Most of it is the TV guide, uh, <laughs> holiday adverts, and uh, pish about celebrities. Eurovision, blah de blah de blah. So, uh, plus ça change, as the French say, which means nothing ever changes. Well, uh, so just to recap then, the planet's fucked, it's your fault, it's getting worse, and today is as good as it's going to get, and yesterday was the worst day until today. Uh, I'm off to have some fun. I hope you are too, because uh, genuinely, folks, <laughs> there's nothing else for it. Um, see you soon. Thanks for tuning in.